Hello and welcome to the State Flow Design Patterns webinar. My name is Michael Carone. I'm the product manager for State Flow. So here's the agenda for today's webinar. Uh, we'll start with an overview of State Flow. Uh, just discuss what State Flow is and uh, some common applications. Uh, why do people use State Flow? Uh, then I'll uh, talk about design patterns and how can design patterns be useful for for people who are using state flow uh, to represent their uh, their logic. Uh, then we'll cover uh, three design patterns today. So uh, two of them will be about switch cases. So one will be a pattern for flow charts and another pattern will be for states or state machines. Uh, the third pattern will cover complex conditions. Um, so uh, talking about how you can encapsulate those complex conditions inside of a function call. Uh, we'll wrap up the webinar by talking about next steps if you want to learn more information about Stayflow. And then we'll uh, have a question and answer period. If you have any questions, uh, be glad to answer them. OK, so what is Stayflow? What can it be used to do? So what Stayflow does is it has uh, its capability. It's a product where uh, you can add state machines and flowcharts to your Simulink models. OK, so uh, where would that be useful? Well, if you have models where um, your modeling systems that contain logic, that's where Stayflow uh, would be used. OK, so what are some applications, common applications of that? Uh, so scheduling is a good example. So suppose you have a number of different subsystems, maybe they're represented by different subsystems within your Simulink model, and you want to trigger exactly when those subsystems should be activated. Uh, maybe you want to trigger them at a specific time interval. Uh, maybe there's uh, certain events or conditions that need to take place in order for a subsystem to be activated. Okay, uh, that's where Stayflow uh, is commonly used, is to um, trigger um, when to turn on or off uh, different subsystems that are modeled within Simulink. Uh, second application would be mode logic. So in this example here um, that you see, this is a, a model of an automatic transmission, and each different gear state of the uh, transmission is modeled with a state. Okay, so you could think of those as states or modes. Um, so we have first, second, third, and fourth gears. Okay, and so uh, what state is the system currently in? Um, you know, that's what mode logic is all about. Okay, and third uh, is diagnostics testing. So if you have uh, any type of system where uh, a failure might occur and you want to see what happens if uh, some type of failure occurs, maybe we have a redundant system that we're going to uh, activate um, to make sure that the system keeps running. Okay, uh, so that type of uh, failure management would be handled uh, with Stateflow. All right, so we're going to talk about design patterns. And what are design patterns? Um, essentially, they present the core of a solution to a recurring problem or a common task. So here are some examples. Now, these are some design patterns that we covered in previous webinars. Uh, so suppose, just to take the first one, is it the bouncer? Uh, suppose you have a situation where you want to trans transition from one state to another, but you, won't, you don't want to do that right away. You want to have some type of buffer period. Um, well, we discussed how you could introduce it the bouncer, and that's a common design pattern. So what we're going to cover in this webinar are uh, these three design patterns, um, which I talked about earlier. And so without further ado, let's open Stayflow and uh, talk about these design patterns. All right, so let's look at the first pattern, and that's a switch case for flowcharts. All right, so you'll see that I have uh, three simulating functions uh, in here right now. And um, what I'm going to do is uh, create a scheduler. I'm going to say if the mode of my system is equal to start, then we're going to call the go start function. If it's equal to off, then we're going to call the go off function. And if it's equal to standby, we'll call the go standby function. 
So mode is uh, an input variable into uh, the stateful chart. And, um, and we're going to trigger these different functions based on its value. So to create this switch case uh, flowchart pattern, what I'm going to use is the state flow pattern wizard. So if I go under patterns, you can see that there's uh, some other um, patterns listed here. One for nested if else statements, uh, one for loops, and we're going to use the switch case pattern. In our case, uh, we have three cases in a default. So we'll choose that. And then uh, just start filling out the the box here. So uh, the description is mode switching. That's just a comment. Uh, the switch expression, I'll just be mode. So we're going to um, do the switch based on the value of mode. If mode is equal to start, then we're going to set the, the speed of our device equal to uh, the output of the function go start. All right, we'll do the same thing. If mode is equal to off, then set speed equal to go off. And the same for standby. Okay. So the the uh, the label just says what should the switch expression be equal to, and then the different bodies listed are the actions that you take place if. Um, the the switch case statement is true all right and the default action that we're going to take is set speed equal to go standby all right and all right press ok and when i press ok i get a flow chart that gets generated all right and this flow chart represents a switch case statement uh let's see so if I start with the default transition, get to this junction, we see if mode is equal to start, then we set speed equal to go start, then it goes here, goes back down this path, and then it goes to the ending point. Right? Uh, if mode is not equal to start, then uh, we go down this path and check if mode is equal to off. If that's true, then speed is equal to go off, and so on. until. Um, if mode is not equal to start off or standby, um, then we're just going to set, we're just going to call the go standby function. All right. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's the switch case pattern for flowcharts. Now, what's, uh, what's also nice about this is that if I generate code, uh, for this, uh, chart, I'm going to get a, uh, switch case statement within the generated code as well. All right, so let's let's actually see that. If I go to uh, real time workshop and try to generate code, uh, what it's going to do is build the code and then create uh, a, an HTML report pointing me to the different files that get generated. Okay, and we're going to look at the uh, main C file, and we'll see that there is a switch case statement within that file. All right, so here's the switch case file. So that's our main file. And uh, we do indeed have a switch case statement within here. All right. Okay, now let's look at the second pattern, and this pattern is a switch case for states. All right, so consider uh, this state chart where uh, before we just had functions, okay, and uh, now we have those functions contained within states. And what we want to do is create a, um, a structure so that the state chart transitions to one of these three states um, pro provided the uh, value of mode um, and regardless of what the previous state is. So for example, um, if mode is equal to off, then the, uh, act, the next active state should be off regardless of what the previous uh, active states were. 
right? So we could do this by creating a bunch of transitions from one uh, state to another and saying if mode is equal to off, uh, transition to off, uh, and so on. Uh, but we would have to do this for, you know, every state, right? Um, so, you know, that that's one solution. Um, but let's do something a little cleaner. And we're going to make use of uh, an inner transition. All right. And with inner transitions, we just need to create three transitions. And let me start writing one, and then I'll explain how this works. All right. So let's suppose that this, the um, machine is currently in the start state. And then mode is set equal to off. Well, what happens is the start state is actually part of a larger super state called mode. Okay, and what Stateful does is it checks from the top level um, the different transitions and the conditions on those transitions. And this inner transition is a top level transition because it originates from the super state mode. Okay, so when the Stateful chart wakes up in the next time step, it's going to check these different inner transitions. And if mode is equal to off, then it'll transition from start to off um, automatically. Okay, And so let's do the same for the other transitions. All right. Now, what happens if uh, we're in the start, if it's in the start state and mode is just equal to start in the next time step and the time step after that and so on? What's going to happen is the start state is just going to keep getting re-entered. Why is that? Well, it'll exit start and just say, oh, mode is equal to start, exit start, and then re-enter start. And so it'll just keep re-entering start one time step after another. And if you look at what we have here, there's an initialization function that occurs upon entering start. And then while in the start state, that's when we call the go start function. So if we keep re-entering the start state, the initialization is just going to keep occurring every time. We don't want that to happen. So an extra condition needs to be added to this condition that says not in the start state. Okay, so in is a uh, internal stateful function, and uh, what it does is it it returns a value of true if the um, state within the uh, parentheses is currently active. Okay. So uh, this makes sure that uh, we're not going to keep re-entering the start state because if it's in start, then this condition won't be true. All right, we'll do the same here. I need to create my ampersands. And same for standby. OK. So uh, this is our uh, pattern for a switch case statement uh, for states. And uh, now it'll switch from one state to another, uh, regardless of the previous state and based on the value of mode. All right, let's uh, look at the last pattern. And this is um, encapsulating complex conditions. So this is the model that we um, looked at before. And in this model, um, in this chart, there was a complex condition that was created here. Okay, we said mode equals off and not in off. And so maybe this is too long. Um, I don't. I don't want it to be this long. And you know, maybe I have. I've seen conditions like this. Know, that are five, six lines long, maybe even longer. And you know, people try to move them around. And let's say you have lots of states in your state flow chart. And um, 
you know, you're trying to figure out a way to position it so that things don't run into each other. You're essentially running out of real estate. Okay. So, um, you know, what would be, it would be nice if you could just take those details and just hide them somewhere. Um, so that's what we're going to do now is um, hide the details. So what I'm going to do is drag in a graphical function. Okay. And I'll make the content subcharted. All right. So I can hide the details uh, in here. And I'll copy that condition. And paste it inside of this function. And then I'll set y, the output of this function, equal to this Boolean statement. All right, so if mode is equal to off and not in the off state, then y is going to be set equal to one. And I can now replace this with switch off. And so if y is equal to one, then switch off is going to return a value of one. And uh, then this condition will, uh, this transition will occur. All right. And I could do the same thing for start, and I could do the same thing for standby. All right, so that's a way that if you have uh, very long conditions uh, inside of your, your charts, you could uh, just encapsulate them inside of a, a function, you know, whether it's a graphical function or an embedded MATLAB function. Uh, it just makes things cleaner, cleaner uh, and easier to read if you don't have uh, these very long and complex conditions um, all over your stateful chart. Okay, so uh, with that, we're going to uh, talk about next steps. Okay, so first is the Stateflow web page where you could find uh, more information on Stateflow, including uh, some user stories, so you can learn about how our customers make use of Stateflow. Uh, you could find uh, some demos that are listed there as well. Uh, they describe some of the applications for which Stateful could be used. Uh, and there's also a list of latest features that have been added to Stateful in the last several releases. Uh, so if you're using an older version of Stateful, uh, you can learn about uh, what's been added to, uh, to the product in, in the last several releases. Uh, record webinars. So if you have not yet seen the previous design patterns webinars, you can view them on the page listed here, uh, in addition to webinars on other topics and, uh, and products. Upcoming seminars. There's a list of uh, some seminars that the MathWorks will be uh, doing in uh, November and December. If you would like a full list of seminars, uh, you could uh, go to the, the link shown here and you can see what are the, uh, the upcoming seminars that might be in your area. And please contact your sales rep if you would like an on-site or online demonstration with an applications engineer. Um, it could be for Stateflow or any other product that you're interested in. Uh, and also please contact your sales rep if you're interested in an evaluation license or you would like any uh, pricing information. Okay, so uh, with that we're going to go offline for about a minute and gather your questions. So if you have not yet submitted a question uh, or questions, you can do so in the Q&A tab of the chat window. And, um, and just submit them there and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to answer them. So uh, we're going to go offline right now.